When you want to write equilibrium expressions, you're going to start with the balanced equation. And then you're going to look at it and identify what's the products, what are the reactants, and then you're going to come down and say, all right, what is K sub C? Wait a minute. K sub C, where did this C come from? I just said capital K before. Well, it turns out there are two varieties. K sub C is when you're using concentrations for aqueous solutions. It can also be used for things that are in the gas phase because concentration really is moles per liter. So that could be expressed in terms of something that's a gas as well as something that's aqueous. The other variety is K sub P where the P stands for pressure. And now you have to be working with gases to use that one. Everything will have to be in the gas phase for it to work. But if I had this situation, here's my balanced equation, and it turned out that all of these were gases, then I would have my choice of using either K sub C or K sub P. If I wrote in the K sub C, I would do the concentrations of the two products raised to the power that is the stoichiometric coefficient in front of them over the reactants and their concentrations also raised to the power that's the same as the stoichiometric coefficient. If we are going to use the K sub P because they're all gases, we would use the pressure of each of the chemicals that we were talking about. So on top, you would have the pressure of each of the products raised to, again, that stoichiometric coefficient in front of them and that would appear over the pressures of the reactants, again, raised to that stoichiometric coefficient. Another name for this term, not looking at the K, just looking at this term, is a mass action expression. And you can calculate it anytime. The reaction does not have to be at equilibrium, but if you wait until equilibrium occurs and then you measure them and you put them in this you will end up with the K value. We will do some of that a little bit later where we're comparing the number at any particular time to what it should be at equilibrium. And that will help us see whether the reaction is going to continue in either the left or the right direction, forward or reverse. Now they're asking us a question. I see that we have methane and water. They're both gases. They're in equilibrium, making carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas. We need to check and make sure it's balanced. One carbon, yes. Four, five, six hydrogens. Six hydrogens. One oxygen. It's balanced, but you should always double check because sometimes you will be given something that isn't balanced and you'll be asked to do that as part of it. Okay, so if I want to write this one down, they want me to do both K sub C and K sub P. So K sub C is just concentrations. So I'll be having the products first. I have carbon monoxide as a product and I have hydrogen gas as a product. The hydrogen gas has a three for its coefficient. And then that's gonna be over the reactants, which were the methane and the water vapor. And when you go find those concentrations, put them in and you can calculate K sub C. They also wanted K sub P. All right, if I'm gonna do that, then I would go find the pressure of carbon monoxide. I would also find the pressure of the hydrogen gas, raise it to the third power because it appears that many times in the balanced equation. And it would be over the pressure of the methane and the pressure of the water vapor. And that's all there is to writing those equilibrium constant expressions.